Okay, we're gonna see how this goes. I am uh, <clears throat> watching myself right now on my laptop, and this is kind of like a makeshift thing. I'm experimenting, you guys are my guinea pigs. Uh, so right now I'm running a 1080p stream at a 30,000 kilobit per second bit rate, okay, which, uh, I can hear myself, which is much higher than uh, it should be. I wanted to make sure that that I could hear myself decently in the laptop. So if anybody says that I'm a little too quiet, I can adjust uh, because I can actually hear myself. Now I know that this isn't the typical format. Obviously I'm in the new studio now, and that is something that has been going on for the past week or two. So if you've been wondering why content has slowed down, that is a big part of it. Also the hurricane down here slowed a lot of things up, uh, especially for my family, my parents. So uh, we've been helping them at their house. They're actually over here right now. So if you hear some weird stuff in the background, that's probably them because their house is basically unlivable. Uh, so trying to uh, get all that squared away. And that again, will also slow down content. Now, if I'm a little too quiet, let me know again, if I need to adjust the audio, I'm running the same setup that I typically run when I film a, you know, a regular video that I'll edit in post for the channel. So if you need any, uh, you know, if you need to throw something at me, let me know that I am too quiet or the camera is going out of focus or something crazy is going on, please let me know because all I can really see is myself uh, with that 20 or 30 second delay. Uh, so we'll see. Also, if you like the way things look, if you think it looks pretty, that's because I'm using the camera that I always use to film with, uh, my, my primary camera. That's the Sony a7S II. I have that wired directly into an Avermedia capture card. <clears throat> Excuse me, I could totally run 4K off this thing if I wanted, uh, but my capture card doesn't support 4K and I'm too cheap to buy an Elgato 4K 60 uh, capture card. So maybe I'll, I'll invest in one at some point, but uh, I imagine that most people aren't going to be able to handle a 4K 60 FPS stream. This camera doesn't even support 4K 60, it's only 4K 30. Uh, so it would be upsampled to 4K 60. I also realized that part of this, uh, part of the donation window is out of sync. Give me one sec, let's see if we can fix that. Uh, go to editor. That's weird, it's showing that it's in picture. Hmm, I don't know. I'll leave it like that for now. Uh, but at least on, on my window, it's showing that it's slightly off camera. I'm also watching, again, I'm watching the stream live, so uh, I'm gonna have to see how all that works out. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the, for the mentions. Um, yeah, I know the audio is probably going to be slightly behind. I, that was something else I wanted to experiment with. Uh, that's something that uh, C, uh, K. Creed just said. Um, and that's, again, because I'm running the audio through the camera. Now, the camera actually has a really good preamp. So it, it's, it's, you know, not going to sound too fuzzy. It won't sound too distorted. Um, actually, all the audio that you hear, that you have heard in the past 50 or so videos that I've recorded on the A7S II has been run directly through the camera. I haven't used... Uh, Really, I mean, I have a, a Phantom Power Box, but it's from Pile. Uh, but uh, the audio is uh, sampled straight into the camera, so I don't have to do any of that, you know, splicing and trying to overlap my recorded audio with the audio that I hear uh, recorded by the camera. This is all straight, simple, forward. It keeps things nice and uh, easy for me in post. Also. I, you know, it doesn't sound too bad. So considering it's a camera, again, this isn't meant for like, you know, hardcore audio recording. I'd say it's pretty good considering I only have like a cheap $50, $50 or so uh, Phantom Power box from Pile here running. So uh, anyway, let's get to some more questions. I saw I saw a super chat from uh, Bazinga. Bazinga is always in the chat. I, if he's not a mod, he needs to be a mod. I'm gonna double check, make sure he, he is. Yeah, he's got, he's got mod status. Like a boss. He gave $50 super chat. My dude. Uh, um, I appreciate that. I know they appreciate it, but we, we want to make sure that we don't. This, this Nothing that I'm doing on this channel is, is for that reason. Um, again, my parents are good. They're covered. Insurance, all that good stuff. I don't want to talk too much about it. Uh, this isn't really a time or place for it. Uh, but I do appreciate your support. Anybody who uh, saw that video knows the whole city pretty much was wiped out. We were spared over here. It's crazy how 20 miles or so makes all the difference uh, with the wind patterns and just how intense uh, storms like that can get. So yeah, uh, let's see here. I'm going to scroll just a little bit. I see a bunch of, uh, you know, talking between you guys. I like seeing that. So if I don't answer your question, maybe somebody else knows the answer to your question uh, because there are a lot of questions usually. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, I want to start with, let's see here. Uh, this is good. 
Okay, okay, this is a good question. Owen Gish, what price should I pay for a used 1080 Ti? Good question. Um, so look, I'm gonna do this. I never buy a graphics card unless I know it's a killer deal, uh, used anyway, because if it's if it's not that great a deal, you might as well just spend the extra 40 or 50 bucks to get the brand new item, because then you get the warranty and peace of mind, you know, you know it's a brand new item, uh, so you, you're not going to have issues unless there's some kind of manufacturer defect, which is always going to be covered under warranty. Uh, so w what I typically do is look for something that's around half price if i can't get near half price maybe bump it up to about 60 or 65 percent of msrp i won't pay more than 70 ish percent of msrp for a used product by that point i'll just buy the new thing unless it's something huge like a car or whatever um, i think when you buy a car uh, there are several other things to consider computer components don't typically depreciate as quickly as cars do uh, in that respect, right? You drive a car for 10 minutes brand new and it's already depreciated 5%. Uh, so cars are different. I think buying a new car, it's very difficult to, to rationalize that. I think that certified pre-owned is probably the best way to go. Usually you get better warranties with those. That's what I did with my Infiniti. Um, and I mean, even just used in general, typically the cars are already depreciated enough. And if you do the, the, the checkups and stuff, make sure the car rex, runs good if you know what you're looking at. If you don't hire a mechanic to do that for you, then you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. Computer parts is a little different. Um, you never know really what was going on behind the scenes. That car could have been running mining 24 seven. A lot of miners don't run 24 seven, but you get the point. Uh, and if they're running very hot, people get concerned about longevity and it's very difficult to gauge. But I would say, I can comfortably say of the 10 or so cards that I just bought on eBay over the last month, all of them work just fine. Uh, some of them are very dusty, but that's really the extent of it. So to answer your question, a 1080 Ti, I wouldn't pay any more than about 450, maybe 500 bucks for. I, I, that's pushing it again. That's usually around a 70% cap of MSRP. Um, if I could find a 1080 Ti for between 400 and 450 in that price range, that's a steal. Anything higher than that, and I think you're starting to get into that 70-ish percent territory where you might as well, if you're gonna spend that much money, buy a new one because you can get exactly what you want. And again, you're gonna have that warranty no matter what. And you're gonna know exactly what happened to it because it was just put in a box, right? You know, there's nothing else that, that happened to it. Uh, and, you know, people have issues trusting other people with hardware, I totally get that. It's like loaning your car out to somebody. It's always a little sketchy, even if it's a family member. So uh, that's something else to consider there. Uh, Jason uh, Azevedo, Canadian $5 Super Chat. Appreciate that, my dude. What CPU should I get for 165 hertz 1440p gaming? It's a good question. I have a 1080 Ti to, uh, taking into account the soon to be released 9th gen from Intel. Uh, Okay, so I can't really comment on the 9th gen Intel stuff. Not only would I be under NDA if I had that stuff and I've already tested it, but also I don't have any of that stuff, so I can't tell you firsthand. Um, I will say that for that kind of refresh rate, right, that, that 165 uh, FPS cap that you're gonna have is going to stress your CPU a lot more than say a 60 hertz 4K, and that's like purely graphics card at that point. Um, but when you start ven venturing into the 100 plus FPS territory, you're gonna put a lot more of that leverage on your CPU, and that's why I would recommend at least a hexacore. Um, so if you could stick to uh, the 8600K would be a decent option. The 8700K obviously is a really good option. You can find some used ones for, for you know, around two to 250. Those are, I think, really good deals. Um, you could get a 2600 or 2600X uh, from Ryzen. I think those are really good values. If you're willing to buy a used 8700K, I would say you're almost just as good getting a regular 2600 or a 2600X for around the same price because you know those again are brand new and they're going to work. I mean, most CPUs aren't randomly gonna die anyway, but having that peace of mind again, that's something people are willing to pay extra for and I'm not gonna knock you for it. If that's something that is just your prerogative, then sure, please, by all means do that. Uh, so that's something else that I'm sure a lot of people weigh. But in general, I would say stick to six cores or more at this point for uh, a high refresh rate um, system. So if you have a 165 hertz or 144 hertz or 120 hertz monitor, six cores in 2018 is pretty much gonna keep you in the green, I would say for the next three or four years. I'd be surprised if anything higher than that was required for that kind of refresh rate in modern games. Okay, scrolling down, let's see here. Uh, yeah, also, I'm, I keep looking at the, uh, I'm, I'm checking the camera because I wanna make sure that it looks okay. Um, it looks a lot better than streaming from that, <laughs> from that Logitech 920, C920 is that what it's called? That's the one everyone has. 
but I figured I would give it a shot and uh, see how long the camera lasts. Actually, I don't have the camera wired directly into the wall, so the batteries might die, and in, in the event that that happens, I will quickly swap them out and uh, we'll get back to business. So the, the, the camera feed might cut out and the audio will cut out, but I'll, I'll fix it within a minute uh, and we should be good to go again. <laughs> so until I get that wire that runs directly into the camera, I'm gonna be running off of battery. And uh, the A7S II chews through batteries, not only because they're so small, but because camera's just, it's a resource hog. Uh, let's see here, Dolphinite. What is the first thing to upgrade in your setup if you already have good peripherals and a great PC? Uh, I mean, or if you have a hole in your pocket, I mean, there are plenty of things you could potentially spend money on. Um, I don't know if you want me to talk about other peripherals or about things in your system. I don't know what you have in your system. It's kind of a vague question, uh, but you could work on lighting. Like I would totally trick out my setup. I would put like LED strips all the way around my desk and make it look all cool. You could get sound damping foam if you want. Uh, buy a bunch of posters, you know, get some thin shelves that you could put on top of your, uh, uh, around your desk, you know, on the top, I would say somewhere you guys know where I'm pointing, like just above the damping foam behind me, uh, would be a cool place for de for uh, shelving. Uh, so you could put some stuff up there. It seems to be like the way people trick out their setups now. Um, if you want to go internal, like I would totally step it up, like build a second system, you know, go hard, go hardcore uh, and, and build like a streaming system inside of like a hardcore gaming rig. That would be really cool. You could do that with the Fantex Evolve X. You could do that with a couple other systems that are, uh, obviously going to cost you more more money than than uh, a regular single PC bill. But that's just something a little out of the box. You could brag and say, hey, yeah, there are two systems in here. If you have, again, the money to spend. But I don't think you'll need to. Henry uh, Lanfear, why did you sell your S5? Uh, one, because I think I got a better car in return. I did pay more for it, but I think my car that I have now, it, it's not only faster, but it's it's nicer on the interior. I think it looks just as good. It, it doesn't have the Audi flair, but I think it still has a nice aggressive stance. Um, I miss all-wheel drive. That's something I do miss about the S5. Um, but again, I do love the power. This car is 400 horsepower, and sometimes it's higher than 400 to the wheels. Uh, these Red Sports are kind of all over the place. Um, but I sold it because of that. I also sold it because I wasn't sure. I just, you know, if something happened um, with the timing chains, the uh, timing chain tens tensioners, gosh, oh my God, they're made out of plastic uh, or reinforced plastic. They used to be really bad on the older 4.2s and 3.2s. Uh, those FSI engines had terrible um, wear and tear issues with respect to the timing chain tensioners. Uh, and that's an engine out service because the timing chains in those cars are against the firewall. And you can't get to that obviously without pulling the whole engine out and detaching the transmission. So uh, that's a easily eight to 10 grand, grand job, you know, four grand just for labor, uh, five grand just for labor. So uh, I was a little worried about that. I didn't have a warranty on the car. Uh, the car that I have now though has an insane warranty, 10 years, 100K miles. I'll never touch that warranty. Like I'll never even come close to breaking. I'll probably sell the car way before 10 years and I'll never come close to driving 100K miles on the road with that car because it never drives. It always sits in the garage. Uh, so I think that's just the best peace of mind possible. Again, I got a faster car in return as well. Um, and I did have to basically traded my S5 in for it. So I had to finance the difference. Um, I, I think financing is just a better option for me because it allows me to keep more money in the bank. Uh, so if I need to spend uh, that money on anything else, you know, emergency-wise, whatever, we get hit by a hurricane, right? Un unexpected expenses. I would like to have that money safe and sound in my savings account rather than invested in a car, which will then require me to liquidate it uh, and uh, get the funds then, which is a whole other hassle. So yeah, that's my take on it, uh, and that's just in a nutshell why I sold the car. It was a great car though. Definitely I do recommend it. I would probably end up buying it again. Uh, I might buy the the, the B8.5 S5 uh, but I still like that style of coupe and that's again why I bought the Q60 RS because it's also a coupe and it's got that same sporty feel to it. Let's see here. Uh, two obelisk K no two obelisk Two, that's his name. Okay, would you change a 1080 Ti into a 2080 Ti? The only instance in which I would justify that change is if I expected to game in a resolution of 4K or higher, and I wanted a refresh rate higher than 60 hertz. Because right now, a 1080 Ti can, t can usually can handle 4K 60 in you know, high-ish settings. It really depends on the game. I would say under 90 to 95% of circumstances, you can play in 4K with high to very high settings 
and be comfortably within that 60 hertz uh, boundary. But if you go higher than that, that's gonna require more graphical horsepower. Again, that's gonna put more leverage on your CPU as well, but I assume you have your CPU in check because you're willing to spend that much on a 1080 Ti to begin with. So if you wanna drop 1200 bucks on a 2080 Ti, then you better have a good reason for doing it. And that reason, in my opinion, is only if you're playing in 4K or higher, maybe you have three 4K screens, you wanna ball up, 2080 Ti would be better for that. Uh, and then again, a higher resolution, or excuse me, a, a higher refresh rate than 4K. That again is gonna leverage your CPU more, but it will require you know, your graphics card to keep up as well. And uh, especially, geez, the required bandwidth for that. 4K at 120 hertz is an insane amount of bandwidth. Uh, so that's another reason why I don't really recommend it in longer, because not many people are playing in this higher resolutions, like ultra stretch 4K and stuff like that. It's just a little too out of reach for the average consumer, I think. Uh, okay, Sebastian Torres, do you think a 7 nanometer 20 XX NVIDIA refresh will happen next year? Uh, no, I don't think I don't think it'll be called that. If it's 7 nanometer 20 XX, I don't think it'll be called, it'll, it'll, it won't be in the 20 series, put it that way. Um, I think a better question, Sebastian, is whether or not we will see the 2060 or the 2050 uh, coming out soon, right? Because they're gonna delay the 2070 launch. And the reason why companies do that is because they say, well, this card is cheaper, it's probably you know gonna be purchased more often, so we're going to delay that launch in order to saturate sales with our higher end cards. So it's, it's purely a marketing play and they're doing it because they want to make the sale right on the on more expensive cards first and once they hit their quotas or when they expect to hit their quotas they then push out the cheaper cards because those are going to sell like hotcakes because they are more affordable the 2060 and the 2050 whatever they end up being we don't know even if they may not even be released uh, i haven't heard much of anything in regards to those two cards uh, but what i will say is that i don't think the architectural play is going to be similar or identical to the 2070 2080 20 ti it doesn't make sense for me for a, a 2060 equivalent to have rt cores to me it just defeats the purpose i don't think the card's going to be powerful enough from a cuda perspective to support the rt you know, architecture, like the the RT cores, the Tensor cores, all that built into it. To me, it seems like a waste of time. It's like putting a really fast car on really cheap wheels. So uh, I think if NVIDIA does something like this, it will, maybe they'll revive the Volta architecture or they will take the, uh, the you know, Turing architecture and they'll dumb it down a lot. Maybe they'll remove RT cores, they'll, they'll remove Tensor cores and they'll, they'll keep it cheaper by doing that. So they'll completely redesign the the die but then that's not really Turing architecture so I don't really know what they're gonna do I'm curious to, to know what you guys think about that uh, because we haven't heard very much about it so uh, yeah good question though okay Andrew Stein would you buy a 2700 X 8700 K or wait for 9900 K for 1440p gaming at 144 Hertz software development a ton of multitasking uh, okay so Good question. I think 144 hertz, the 8700K, and the 2700X can both handle that refresh rate admirably. So if you're looking at it just from that perspective, there make it makes no sense to me to wait. Um, I, I would buy, frankly, either one. Um, you could get by with the 27, uh, 2700X. Really would be <laughs> that would be great. Um, 8700K would be slightly better uh, from a gaming perspective, but I think the 2700X has the edge when it comes to just straight up raw horsepower, computational power due to those two extra cores, four extra threads, uh, and with better uh, memory overclocking support, right, which is tied directly to the Infinity Fabric, which speeds up the entire Ryzen process, uh, the 2700X is a very formidable chip in 2018. So uh, I'm not going to take anything away from Intel. I, they're still, they still have the gaming king as of right now, and the 99 100K looks to be the new gaming king, uh, but again, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. And if you can find the 2700X for cheaper, uh, then uh, it's, it's tough. It's tough to really say what the cutoff would be for me. Um, but if I was choosing a system for an all-around great multitasker, uh, software development, assuming that they aren't Intel-dependent softwares, then I would say the 2700X is the better bet. Uh, from strictly gaming perspectives. The 8700K is the better bet. So if you're going to do more of the development, multitasking side of things, 2700X is your best bet. Again, assuming those things aren't Intel uh, dependent, that the software you're going to be using. Let's see. Scroll link down here. Uh, Adam Stevenson says, Thought, uh, thoughts on Bitwit's latest video. I saw the title. I actually saw it right before I set up the live stream, so I didn't have time to watch it yet. Uh, but I love it when Lyle gets into those videos. So I'll definitely be watching it after this because uh, I, <laughs> I'm always up for a laugh, especially on days like today. Uh, so I will be sure 
to watch it immediately after this. And I'm sure I'll say something on Twitter or uh, in the Discord server about it at some point. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I think I missed, uh, I'm gonna get Bazinga. Bazinga, $10 super chat. Again, I appreciate it, my dude. So this is for you. Where is Pepsi? Are you sure you will not exceed 100K miles once Lisa gets here, once Lisa gets her hands on the car? <laughs> That's good. That's a good point. Uh, so this, this is my take on it. Um, when she moves here, I told her, I was like, okay, I'll buy you a Jeep or I'll buy you uh, something. I'll buy you some bigger car that you can take off-road. You can drive onto the beach and all this good stuff. Plus, the perks for taxes is I can write off a bigger car. It's better incentive for me. So I will end up probably making that the company car, which is what it will essentially be. Um, we'll do a lot of moving equipment back and forth with that vehicle. Uh, so it will be, I think, a, a better investment to get a bigger car for her, and that's great because she wants a bigger car anyway. Uh, it's going to be 4x4. Four four. It's got to be for what she wants to do. Uh, and then we'll leave the Q60 for just general driving uh, whenever I'm comfortable enough parking it next to somebody else. That's when we'll be using it. Uh, but good question. Also, Pepsi is in the other room. Uh, she's probably hiding on top of her little trap house that we built her because the dogs are over and she does not like the dogs. So she Remember, she's used to living alone, so she's she's been spoiled for her whole life. Uh, so when Misty and Mako come over, because my parents are here with them, she gets a little... She gets a little upset, and uh, she she really she tests the limits that she can push with those dogs. Mako doesn't care. Mako's as big as she is, but Misty's bigger than Pepsi. So, you know, Pepsi's got to she's got to see how uh, <laughs> how far she can push before it just makes Misty bark and growl and do all those snarly things. And Pepsi backs down very quickly, uh, but she's over there right now. I'm sure watching the dogs very closely. <laughs> I didn't want to keep her in here because she might have wanted out at some point. Let's see, uh, Twon the Pink, $10 Canadian. I appreciate that, my dude. You look like a Halo YouTuber by the name, the Act Man, when you're both wearing glasses. Okay, I'll have to look him up, the Act Man. Question, what's the minimum specs to build a second PC for streaming only? Looking to get 1080p, 60 FPS. Uh, this is something that you could probably get away with. This is like power supplies, right? You could get away with a 450 or 500 watt power supply in a 1070, i7 8700k build right but you don't want to push the limit it's it's you could if you wanted if you were on a really tight budget but assuming that you're not uh and you want that second pc because you could stream on your first pc but i assume you're gonna have some money left over and you're comfortable spending that money because you want a second pc just for this subject uh i would say no less than an i5 a modern i5 and no less on amd side than a ryzen 5 1400 uh or 2400g if you want to go with uh, with the APUs, and I say that for a couple of reasons. Um, you don't know what you'll be if you want to just stream on that PC. You could probably get away with even an i3 because that's all it's going to be doing. Um, but I would say, just in case you want to have extra headroom, if you want to push that bit rate up, you want to use you know, obviously X two six four for that. Then my yeah my recommendation would be at least uh, R five uh, or i five. Just again, because you want to play it safe. To me, that makes sense. Uh, scrolling down, AMD best value. That's right. I believe that. I think AMD does have the value uh, on their side right now, all across the board. No, maybe not with graphics cards. Uh, I think NVIDIA is still dominating that market. Not from the Turing perspective, but from the uh, Pascal perspective. Look, Pascal is still very viable in 2018. I don't want you guys to feel like if you buy a Pascal card right now that you're behind the times, like you, you couldn't afford the Turing stuff, you had to buy the Pascal stuff. That's absolutely not true. The GTX 1070 is still one of the best value graphics cards on the market right now. The GTX 1060 falls slowly behind that. The RX 570, RX 580, both 4 and 8 gig variants of that card are still great in 2018 for 1080p and even 1440p gaming, medium to high settings, sometimes even very high settings, depending on the game and your C CPU to back it up. So uh, it, it really, I don't know. I, I would just say, you know, if, if you're on a budget of, let's say, $1,000 or less, sticking with a GTX 1060 or 1070 or a 5, 570 or 580 is just gold. It, it really is. In that budget, it, it's gold. If you want to buy used, then you're gonna save even more money on the graphics card and you'll be able to buy a nicer CPU or a nicer motherboard or more RAM or a you know, bigger storage drive. 
Uh, so you can really work with your budget if you're willing to go used. Um, and that's why I've pushed so many used graphic card videos lately. Um, but even if you choose to buy new, which again, I'm not going to dock you for, that's your prerogative, that's what you choose to do with your money, uh, then you can still work out a solid 1080p or 1440p gaming PC within a $1,000 budget, at least in the US. Uh, I'm not sure about Canada, other places, obviously they typically charge more for comparable PC parts. So um, that sucks. And then Europe has the VAT tax. So plenty of things to consider outside of the United States. But for those who live inside the United States, which is roughly 50 to 60% of my audience, then uh, you're gonna be sitting good in the neighborhood, especially if you buy used. But even new, um, Pascal is cheaper than it was at launch, which is good for the most part. Uh, let's see, scroll link down here. Adrian Kiwan. Keon, Keon, all right, I butchered that. He says, hey there, man, love your vids, mate, from Australia here. I appreciate that, my dude. I heard you guys' internet's not that great. Brian was telling me, he said he has decent internet. I think I think he told me that. Uh, but Australia in general is not known for their internet speeds, and I think that's due to the different ways that it's linked with other servers across the planet. Obviously, they have to go completely across the Pacific to get to the US, um, and that, that's a big uh, issue. Latency there is another uh, thing to consider. So. I'm wondering how, how it really is or not. Like, if I move to Australia tomorrow, like, what should I expect internet-wise, and what should I expect to pay for that uh, for that bandwidth? I'm just curious. Okay, scrolling down. Um, Mike Belaboki, what's the best CPU to get right now? And depend. What do you mean best value or best performer? Best performer before the 9900K comes out. For gaming, it's the 8700K, hands down. Uh, best value, I would say the 2600 from AMD is the best value right now. Because you're getting six cores, 12 threads, and you're only paying about 200 bucks for it. That, to me, stomps all over the i5 counterpart, which is going to cost about the same, but you're not going to get multi-threading. You're not going to get hyper-threading because... Intel is Intel. Uh, so take the gravy from AMD while you can at that price. I think the 2600 is a killer bet right now. And you can click XMP in your BIOS and not have to worry about anything else. Uh, it's not stubborn like Ryzen 1 was, uh, the first gen Ryzen stuff. Okay. Uh, John Heiselman, are you getting the Evolve X? Uh, rip, my dude. I already have a review of the Evolve X on the channel, so might want to go watch that. GG. Uh, okay, it's scrolling down here. Let's see. I'm at the very bottom. I'm reading all the chats right now. I know I missed a lot. I can't really keep up with them, but um, I'm I'm live right now reading your guys' comments. So when you type them, I read them. I'm trying to find the good ones. Uh, Venom415, what do you think AMD will bring this spring, CPU and GPU-wise? I have absolutely no idea, to be honest. Um, look, a lot of these companies keep things under wraps, and they do a great job doing it. Um, I, I will probably know... Uh, as soon as the other tech reviewers, when we have uh, an upcoming CPU launch, they're usually pretty good about telling us that stuff. Again, of course, under embargo. But uh, in general, if AMD had something coming, I could probably hint it to you some way, in some fashion. Um, I don't. I haven't heard anything from them recently. Uh, I mean, Threadripper 2 was their big thing, right? So uh, nothing this year that I know of. If something does come out, I mean, I'm out of the loop. I don't really read the news or the hype or like the you know the rumors and leaks. Uh, but I will say I've had no contact with them recently because there is not much to report on. So uh, and then also from the graphics card side of things, I'm not sure either. I mean, I, the, the Vega 56 and 64, in my opinion, were flops not because of the performance because they were they were comparable performance wise, but the the inventory levels just weren't there. They're there now. You can buy an RX 50, uh, excuse me, a Vega 56 for what around 400 bucks to me that's a decent deal that that puts it right in line with the gtx 1070 then it comes down to software i prefer nvidia software i'm just more familiar with it usually i'll choose the 1070 you get cuda support in adobe products um, that's another big perk for me but you know if if you're into just supporting amd because you feel like supporting amd i have no problem with that if that's your if, again that's something that you prefer to do um, then vega 56 is viable but the launch itself was difficult. People couldn't get the cards, and then the mining craze took off, and then those cards were ungettable. People were paying thousands of dollars for Vega 64. It's ridiculous. They were some of the best mining cards available, but still, that hurt the gamer. Uh, so I think it really comes down to how quickly they can release a new graphics card, you know, a, a new GPU architecture, uh, and what the prices end up being. I think they have a huge opportunity here to undercut, undercut NVIDIA. Look, if they release their cards right now, that would that would stifle NVIDIA's cheaper lineup so much. Look, NVIDIA only has the 2070, 2080, and 2080 Ti from Turing, which means that we have to fall back on Pascal. So that means that whatever AMD releases now, new, that's affordable, will compete with NVIDIA's older gen stuff, which 
I think isn't all that bad because it gives us more more of an option, right? We're not stuck to buying older hardware. Uh, and at the same time, we're probably gonna get better performance for the same price because this again will be new architecture and seven nanometer, that's, in, that's, that's nothing to laugh at. Uh, so we'll see what it really brings. I don't know much about it um, because we haven't heard much from them in this regard, uh, but we know it's coming. I just don't know how soon. I also realized that my chat window is completely chopped off in the live feed. That sucks. Uh, Hassan Aslam, does using a riser cable for graphics cards make your FPS drop? Uh, yes, the answer to that is yes, um, but it depends on the, on the riser cable. So some riser cables won't make it drop at all, I should clarify. Um, like the riser cable that I use in, in my personal rig doesn't result in an FPS drop. You can verify that very easily. You just remove the riser cable, plug the card straight into the PCI slot on the motherboard, run your tests, and then swap it back out. And you can usually gauge the FPS delta, usually within the margin of error, one to two FPS. That means that there's no difference at all. Um, but a bad riser cable will give you very choppy frame rates. That's one of the reasons why you, you, know, you might be able to tell that a riser cable is going bad if your FPS are really smooth and then all of a sudden you get a really big drop frame. Uh, maybe it takes half a second for those frames to load, right? That's, a, that's an incredibly long amount of time and you will notice that. Um, that actually happened with Lisa's system. I had to swap that riser cable out for another one and then boom, no more chop. And she was complaining about it a lot. Uh, so I basically deduced it down to that riser cable. I swapped the card. I uh, made sure CPU was, you know, the overclocks were stable. Um, tried reinstalling the game. And then I just said, screw it. It's probably riser cable. I should have ultimately thought that it was riser cable to begin with. I just didn't think much of it. I didn't think it could go bad in the middle of gaming. Uh, but it certainly did because when I swapped it for another one, it was good to go. Let's see here. Uh, Kevin Zeng. Hi, Greg. Been watching your videos for two years. I appreciate the support, Kevin. Thank you for that. Do you think older CPUs like the i5-6600K and i7-4790K are still worth it for gaming if bought at a low price? Might regret my decision. Uh, might, might regret my decision. Go used. It's a good question. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that they're still viable. You could game on a 4790K, no problem. Uh, and you're really only going to see, with respect to Intel, maybe... <coughs> It's tough. If you, if you go back as far as Ivy Bridge, I know the difference is between 20 to 30 percent. So that means that if you're gaming on an 8700K now and you're getting 100 FPS, you're going to lose about 30 percent of those frames if you drop down to Ivy Bridge. But dropping down to just Haswell, I'm pretty sure I have to go back and test. I haven't tested this recently. I would say that the difference there is only going to be 10 to 15 percent, maybe a little more, depending on the clock speeds. Uh, obviously, if you know, a 5, 5.2 gigahertz 8700K is going to blow a 4790K out of the water at 4.4 gigahertz. So it really depends on, uh, on clocks. Uh, but four cores and eight threads in 2018 is still okay. People tend to, oh, it's a quad core. Oh, I don't want a quad core, right? Because AMD made hexa-core CPUs mainstream when they released the, the R5 series. But I, I would say that an i5 from back then is going to be okay. Uh, an i7 is still going to be acceptable. Um, I would say obviously better than uh, just a, a quad core non-hyper-threaded Intel CPU. So a 4790K, I would probably pay around I wouldn't pay more than what an R5 1400 costs. So if you can get an R5 1400 for 160 bucks, that's about how much I would pay for a 4790K. But I have a feeling that those are going for a bit more on eBay, which means that I would probably recommend Ryzen 5 over that just because you get a brand new system and the motherboards aren't going to be as difficult to obtain, right? If you buy a, a 4790K, you're probably not going to find a new Z97 motherboard out there. You're going to have to buy a used Z97 motherboard, which will then require you to buy DDR3 and DDR... I, Pretty sure, yeah, DDR3. And DDR3 is probably gonna have to be bought used as well. Um, so all that to consider, right? So if you go with a Ryzen 5 chip, you're gonna be on DDR4, you're gonna be on a newer chipset, you're gonna have more support, more features more than likely. And it'll, t it'll probably cost you the same, if not less, just because the platform is so cheap up front. All right, let's see here. Let's scroll up. Uh, okay, Brandon says, he asks, is a 650 watt power supply enough for an i7-8700K and RTX 1080 heavily overclocked? Um, I'm pretty sure the recommended power supply for a 1080 is 600 watts or thereabouts. Um, so yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. I, I know it's fine, actually. Um, even if it's heavily overclocked, depends on how, I mean, obviously if you're like doing some really weird like custom cooling or you're like dumping liquid nitrogen on the thing and you're overclocking it, across the board to like 
4,000 megahertz, whatever they get them to, that's going to that's gonna consume a ton of power. You're going to want an overclocking power supply for that. But 650 watts for your average gamer, even when overclocked, both on your CPU and your GPU, is acceptable. Um, and even if it's not ideal, right, at maybe the 400 watt range, because that would be your peak efficiency, you're still going to be comfortably within that zero to 650 watt range. You're going to be near five. I would say you're probably going to assume around 500 watts or so. It depends on how heavily overclocked that RTX 20, 1080 is. 2080, I think, is what you mean. It really depends. I'm actually running some power consumption tests right now on my RTX 2080s. So we'll see very soon. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I see a question from Joran Brez Brenzdol. Thoughts on the Cooler Master H500 new version with mesh front? Uh, I actually already reviewed that, so you should go watch my watch my video on it. That would probably help. I'm pretty sure the H500 and the H500P mesh are the same. Pretty sure. I mean, if they're, if they're different, they're very, very tiny differences between the two. So go watch my review on that, and then maybe uh, that'll give you a better spiel. I'm just telling you that because it's easier to explain in the video that I already created about the subject versus wasting time for other people who already have seen the video in this live stream to answer the question. Okay, let's see. Ba -ba. Uh, okay, Mr. Suds i7-7700K or Ryzen 2700X for games only. I would still go with the 2700X. Even if the 7700K has a slight edge in games, it's still locked to four cores. And if you ever decide to do anything else other than game, at the same time, especially, you're gonna benefit from the Ryzen 2700X. Uh, so I would go with that one, in my opinion, assuming you're not worried about the price difference there. And I don't really know your prices. You, can, you could be living in a totally different country where prices are totally different, but that's uh, something for you to consider, something that I don't really know. Uh, okay, let's see. Stamp says, love your videos, keep up the good work. I appreciate that. There are so many questions, I am trying my best. Uh, ba -ba -ba. No problem, Joran. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the review. Again, if you have any other questions about the review, maybe I didn't answer something that you were looking for in that review of the H500, then uh, you can leave a question. Just at me in the Discord server, and I'll be sure to get to it. I look at all my ads. Sometimes I'm, I'm a day or two behind, uh, but I try to reply to all of them, especially if they're good questions like that. Uh, Rex's text, is a 90 to Ti still capable? Yes, it is. Uh, I have videos on that, actually very recent videos within the last two or three weeks. I invite you to watch those. It's about used graphics cards, um, and I use I bought two 980 Ti's, uh, Zotac Amp Extremes, just to prove the point. Right? I went out and spent my own money on these cards because I think that they're great values. Um, so if you spend around 200 bucks on a 980 Ti, that's GTX 1070-ish performance. I think it's a really great value because 1070s new are selling for 400 bucks or, or higher. Um, you could even get 1070s for around 220 bucks or so on eBay if you're willing to look and bid on the right ones. Let's see here, scrolling down. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, Shak Shakru Ali. Oh gosh, I butchered that name. I apologize. Have you ever tried to build a Hackintosh just to learn from it? I've had many people request that and I haven't gotten around to it yet because I am very afraid that I will not know what I'm doing. I know it's easy just to follow the steps in the forums, uh, but I actually have to get around to doing that and I have to make sure that I have the hardware that supports a Hackintosh build. Uh, so it's going to take more research than I've done currently to actually successfully do one. I'm going to probably hit a... Um, Quinn from uh, Snazzy Labs just to make sure that I know what I'm doing because he's done that quite a few times. So uh, maybe we'll do like some kind of collab or something. I think that'd be a really cool <clears throat> collab between the channels. Uh, we'll see if uh, we can do something like that. Uh, let's see, Zombie Zivvies, how's Will doing? Haven't seen him much on Discord lately. Good question. Uh, so Will, if he's asking this because we got hit by that hurricane, right? All the power's out. We have no power on the uh, east side of the bridge and uh, no water. Um, and no cell service, so people have no idea what's going. Like they have never, they haven't seen the news in a week. They have no idea if their loved ones are okay. It's actually kind of scary. And uh, Will, I had no idea that Will was okay until he, he texted me about two days ago, um, actually in Skype. So he probably found a, a Wi-Fi hotspot or something and sent me. And he's like, "Hey, I'm still alive." I mean, that's literally what he said. Uh, but he was watching his dad. Uh, his dad has some medical issues, so uh, he was with his dad, making sure he was okay throughout the thing. And uh, I think the hospital that he was in, I mean, just got obliterated. So. Uh, you know, the roof is like missing, leaks everywhere, basically what happened to my parents' house. So uh, it was good to hear that, that he was okay, um, but uh, yeah, he probably won't be on Discord for a while. There's going to be a lot of cleanup. I'm not even sure if the house he's currently renting is even livable. I don't know. I mean, he's lived in that house for a while, 
um, several years, I believe. And I, again, I don't know if he can actually live in it because uh, it just might be completely flooded out. So we'll see. I will try my best to, to keep up with him. We talk almost daily, uh, but since this hurricane, we haven't been able to talk very much at all. So um, we'll have to catch up and see what's going on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Joey Happ, at Greg, what's your favorite GPU under 100? Uh, Joey, I literally have a video that's like titled that exact thing that I uploaded like four or five days ago. You should go watch that video. Best graphics card for 100 bucks, it's in that video. That's yeah, GTX 970. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Brandon Smith asks, is a $50 GTX 1070 suspicious? Um, I'm going to say, yeah, probably. You know what it sounds like? One of those rip-off Chinese brand uh, graphics cards that are actually flashed. They have flashed BIOSes. So the, the dies themselves are GTX 550 Ti's or some garbage like that. Uh, and they just flash BIOSes that make CPU-Z or whatever, or GPU-Z, uh, identify the flashed BIOS as the actual card when in reality the hardware is different. I know that uh, somebody said that GPU, the, the GPU identifiers now tell you when it's a fake card, which is kind of funny because once it tells you it's a fake card, it's kind of too late, right? Because you've already bought it. So I don't really know how much good that does. Um, bloody, let's see, uh, Bloody Glitch asked a good question. Will FEMA cover your parents' house or their insurance? The FEMA doesn't, okay, so FEMA supplemental stuff um, and FEMA doesn't cover much at all. Uh, so when Hurricane, let's say Hurricane Katrina went through, right, wiped out all those homes in Louisiana because they were under sea level, um, usually those checks are between like a thousand and three thousand dollars. It's not meant to replace your home. It's just supplemental. So they expect you to have uh, insurance, flood insurance, um, just home insurance in general. And then FEMA comes in and says, hey, we'll help you out a little more. We'll give you this for maybe relocation expenses or whatever. That's what FEMA steps in and, and does. Uh, but home insurance is for actually replacing the home. You'll never get FEMA insurance. It doesn't exist. FEMA is just there to kind of supplement whatever you might have coming from your insurance company because sometimes it takes a while for insurance companies to pay things out. So that's how, uh, that's how FEMA works. Good question though. Let's see, scrolling down. Andrew Knight asks if I love turtles. Am I, did I say something that makes, makes you think that I love turtles? Who doesn't love turtles? I mean, that's kind of a dumb question. It's like saying, who doesn't love teddy bears? Like, who, who really doesn't love teddy bears? I mean, that's a genuine question. If you don't like teddy, bear, teddy bears, let me know in the chat, because uh, we're going to have a talk. Okay, scrolling down again. Mm, M copyright. At Science Studio, I missed it. What is scary is how dependent we are or we have become to technology. If one small piece goes wrong, the entire system goes down. Um, yeah, look, dude, I think one of the biggest threats to our modern society is, is, society is an EMP. Um, when I think about an EMP, I think about a nuclear detonation. That's a, a byproduct of that. Um, but it's funny because I don't really think about the destruction of like an entire city by a nuke being the biggest issue. I always think about the aftermath, like the nuclear fallout or the EMP that kills all the electronics. Like to me, those are the long lasting effects, right? People get incinerated instantly by these bombs, but but the people that survive are gonna, stir, I mean, they're gonna, gosh, I think I'd rather die quickly than die slowly by radiation poisoning. Uh, so those are the people that really get hammered, I think, just from like a, because they get dragged out um, and not having power from an EMP and just being exposed to nuclear fall. That's a, that's a huge issue. And I think that if anything big like that happened, those would be the, the uh, just the most pertinent things uh, that would affect us personally. Uh, not having electronics, not having technology at our disposal would definitely send us back into the Stone Age. And that is a scary, scary thing. Let's see here. I don't. I can't read your name because it's in. Uh, looks like Japanese, but I don't know for sure. Hey Greg, I was about to pull the trigger on an 8700K, but wondering if I should wait for Ryzen 2. It would be Ryzen 5 3600X 7 nanometer. I'll be gaming at that res 4K, upgrading from nine from from 1080p. Okay. If you're jumping to 4K, you're going to offset your CPU usage. Your CPU usage is going to drop because your frame rate is going to drop, and that puts more leverage on your graphics card to push out, uh, you know, to render each pixel versus having to render multiple frames at the same time, which is something that your CPU struggles to do. Uh, we have videos talking about this extensively. But if you plan to jump from 1080p to 4K, then it really makes no sense to wait for a better CPU because that's not gonna be your limiting factor. It will be your graphics card. Also, I have no idea where you got Ryzen 5 3600X from because I've never heard of that before. If that's some leak or whatever, I wouldn't count on that being the name. Uh, but 
I also wouldn't be willing to wait that long because we don't know how long it's going to take before the 7 nanometer stuff arrives. So don't get your hopes up. I would say 8700K is perfectly fine right now if you want to buy an 8700K. Uh, okay, let's see. Ba -ba. Uh, Mo Iro, did you manage to get your money back from that super cheap graphics card? Uh, yes, I actually, I, I said in that video, Mo, that I would upgrade, update the, the comment section. I would pin my comment with my uh, ultimate, like, you know, uh, result from that. I would tell you guys if I got scammed totally and never got my money back or if I got my money back and how long it took. I did get it, I did get my money back. It took 30 something days, I think 35 days. And the reason for that is because PayPal holds that money when it's under dispute for 30 days. So you're gonna be waiting, I think it's 30 days. You're gonna be waiting that long for your money kind of in limbo. Uh, so it won't actually go to the seller, but it won't come back to you because eBay has to settle a dispute, especially if you do it via PayPal. So that money stays there in that little limbo state and then it gets refunded to you when they determine that your claim is valid and that the purchaser was attempting to rip you off. And that's what happened. So it was about uh, a little over a month to get the money back. Um, so if you're really worried about being scammed, but you're not afraid of not seeing that money for you know a while, then it's not gonna hurt just to try it. But obviously, like someone said earlier, Brandon said earlier, if it's a $50 GTX 1070, that's a scam. Like point blank, that or the card is broken. Um, and that's misleading if it's not mentioned. So uh, keep an eye out for all that good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. All right, scrolling down just a little more. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Seeing some good questions. Uh, Rise official is a good one. What's the best GPU an FX 6300 can handle? No bottleneck. Would an RX 580 8 gig work fine? Uh, depends on the game. Look, you can't say that a game is never going to bottleneck under a certain, you know, uh, under for a certain computer build because every game utilizes resources differently. So. You know, you could be playing GTA 5, that would be a pretty balanced game between CPU and GPU horsepower, but you could be playing Witcher 3, where it's all about your graphics card, and you could run on a G, you know, uh, G3258. Oh gosh, my Pentiums are getting confused. You know what I'm saying? Like dual core, dual core CPUs from way back when. I think it's a, yeah, it's a 3258, right? Am I going crazy? That was the one that was overclockable, the anniversary edition. Yeah, if, if that's not it, I just mind blown. But anyway, yeah, I think that's what I'm talking about. You can go with something like that and play Witcher 3 and 4K and not have too many hardcore issues. You might have some stutters, but in general, it's almost always gonna be your graphics card at higher resolutions with those games, especially. So it really depends on the game. But I would say in general, um, an FX 6300 is gonna be paired just fine with anything at a GTX 1060s level or lower. Um, your your CPU is almost going to be always the bottleneck when you're using an FX 6300, even if it's overclocked, just because of how inefficient pile driver and bulldozer architecture is. Uh, and that's for a variety of reasons. We have videos on that as well, talking about why FX processors aren't actually hexacore and octacore processors, because they share many resources, including a scheduler, which limits things quite a bit. Uh, they, I think they share FPUs. I'm trying to think off the top of my head what it was they shared. Oh, they, they shared quite a bit. Um, it, it mimics to an extent multi-threading, which is, that would make the FX6300 a, you know, triple core, tri-core, what would you say? Yeah, tri-core, right? Is that right? I feel like I'm losing my mind. Anyway, you get the point. Uh, scrolling down, let's see. Uh, best RGB fans, that was a good question. Uh, I really like the Bora fans from Lee and Lee. I think they have really cool, really cool RGB fans. Corsair has really great RGB fans. Um, if you want to go with NCXT, they have a great RGB setup with the Hue, the Hue 2, I know, I think now they have out. Um, the only reason why I don't recommend Thermaltake RGB fans is because they're a little, the LEDs are more spaced out, so they don't diffuse very well. I don't like, I don't like it when RGBs don't diffuse. Uh, so that's a reason why I always use either, um, G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM, or I use... Uh, Team Group Nighthawk RGB RAM. Uh, Team Group does a great job as well, scattering that light. Uh, and, and I think G-Skill is, is probably the best at it. Um, Corsair's new RGB RAM is really good as well. Uh, again, Corsair's really good from an RGB front altogether. Not too much, yeah, the, the diffusion there is really good. Uh, and the customization is really good because the software is great. Uh, NZXT is really good as well. Again, the Hue Plus using the CAM software. Uh, it's gonna be a little more resource intensive in general, but that's because NZXT actually takes diagnostic info and uses that for their build service. Um, so uh, there are a few different options, but in general, I'd say Corsair and ZXT um, for just fans, Lee and Lee Bora fans are really good. Those are probably my top three. Okay, scrolling down here. 
Let's see. You got about 10 more minutes in life. This guy's by really fast. She's already 950. Okay, uh, Timmy2G at Science Studio. What do you think of the i9-9900K and how they said that Intel cheated on the benchmarks? Timmy, I literally released that video like yesterday. You should go and watch that video. It answers your question. It tells you exactly what I think about the situation. Uh, okay, Pat Adolfo. Back in July, I bought an i7-4790K with a motherboard and 16 gigs of RAM from my brother for 300 bucks. I originally had an i5-2400 and 8 gigs of RAM. Would you personally say it was a good deal? Um, hmm. Yeah, I would say, yeah, i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and a motherboard. That, that to me, just if, even if you didn't have a system before that, that's a really good deal. For 300 bucks, you could probably sell just the CPU for 200, and then 16 gigs of DDR3 is still gonna sell for, I would say, around 100 bucks. Uh, so, you're basically getting a motherboard for free. I don't think that's a bad platform at all. Uh, and you could certainly game on that as well. So yeah, I think you made out. That's a really good, really good deal there. Scrolling down to see Jason uh, Azevedo. Thank you for that $5 Canadian Super Chat, my dude. Does raising the power target of a 1080 Ti to the maximum for everyday use in gaming degrade the chip over time? I intend to keep it for two to three years. Uh, yeah, so it's going to degrade the chip. Obviously, if you run more voltage through a chip, it's going to degrade faster. How much faster that degree is, is difficult, if not impossible, to measure, and that's why there is no set standard, like, hey, if you set your voltage to 3 point, or 1.362, your CPU is going to last for 4.5 years. If you set it to 1.42, it's going to last for 1.6 years, right? Um, so obviously, as you increase voltage, you're making that thing heat up faster. Those those power tolerances are, are they're limited. Um, and when you're running that much voltage through very tiny, fine parts, those things could split fray. You get certain chunks of transistors that don't function anymore. Uh, I mean, look, with every wafer that's ever ever created, there's never as far as I know, it'd be difficult to actually quantify this, but to have a perfect wafer with every transistor and the entire wafer working perfectly, that's why you have binning, right? That's why you have certain things that, that limit uh, the CPU's ability to overclock, right? Power tolerances, um, and it, that's a big one, overclocking tolerances with respect to heat, uh, right? Because those two are typically uh, <laughs> exponentially related. Uh, once you hit a certain frequency threshold, the voltage requirement just skyrockets, and that is due to binning, that is due to the imperfections in each of those dies. Uh, so yeah, if you raise the power tolerance, or if you raise the, the, the power target, you're going to wear it out quicker, but to what degree, I can't tell you. Every GTX 1080 Ti is going to be different because they're all running on different dies. And on top of that, even if they all ran on the exact same die, you still wouldn't be able to quantify that because there are different environmental situations, right? Maybe it's running a little hotter. Maybe your system in general is just running a little hotter. Uh, or who knows? You're using a different motherboard, different power supply, all those tiny little differences and ripple and all that stuff can affect it. Uh, but in general, raising the power target, I don't think is going to kill your graphics card anytime soon, unless it's just not manufactured well. These cards are able to handle overclocks. In fact, they encourage overclocks because they're automatically overclocked typically out of the box anyway. Uh, I wouldn't be afraid to do it. Just don't do it you know, to an insane level. That, that, then you're just testing your luck. Okay, uh, Mr. Smile, when will graphene chips be used to make processors? Good question, Mr. Smile. I have a, actually a video dedicated to that uh, about you know what's the limit for transistors, how small can we truly go uh, before quantum tunneling takes over and it just defeats the purpose of having a transistor and a chip anyway. Uh, that's a good question. I have that video up. Uh, I believe it's in the Crash Course playlist. It might be in the Minute Science playlist. I'm not sure if I did that one fast or slow, um, but it's, it's on the channel nonetheless. I invite you to watch that video. You will be entertained, I think. Um, let's see. Ba -ba -ba. <clears throat> Ethan Hinkle, do you think it will be worth it to take apart my Corsair 570X and paint it white? I think the white version looks so good. Don't they sell a white 570X? Look, painting is not as easy as it looks. And you're going to have some very, unless you're a good painter, you consider yourself a professional painter. Um, I'm certainly not. Anytime I have to paint anything, I'm always kind of afraid because if I butcher it, I got to start from scratch. I got to scrub all the paint off with nail polish remover or something and start again. Um, but painting it to me, painting a case is very difficult because there are so many fine crevices and grooves. Um, and you could just buy a white 570X, I'm pretty sure. So if you're that concerned about it being white, just sell your 570X and buy a new one and you know, eat the, the difference in cost. That's what I would do. 
Uh, okay, I see a couple more questions here. I'm going to get to these right now. I appreciate all these good questions. You guys are thebomb.com uh, for joining me on the Sunday night slash Monday morning or afternoon, depending on where you live on the planet. Uh, let's see, Louise Carpio, delitting on Ryzen, not recommended because Ryzen for the most part is soldered and that's not smart. So you don't want to delete a soldered chip. Uh, that's, that's one way to kill your chip very fast. So don't do it. Uh, usually they use some like indium gallium mix and uh, that's the gallium part makes it fluid enough to where it doesn't, you know, it doesn't require the solder to heat up at to very high temperatures, which could damage the dye. And the indium is believe the indium is the conductor part, I want to say. So having indium there is important. Um, but the, the gallium keeps it kind of liquid because gallium melts in your hand and uh, that makes it slightly malleable. It's like liquid metal that you use from Thermal Grizzly. They're not the same thing, uh, but they're similar. Okay, let's see here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Demetrius, P through 50X, Mesh of IC or H500? <clears throat> That's a typical question. Okay. I think you're looking at three different price ranges there, Demetrius. I would say P350X if you're worried about price. <clears throat> Excuse me, because you can get that for about 60 bucks. I think it's a really great value. I think it's 60 bucks. Uh, the Mesh of IC is a little more expensive, but it's going to have better airflow. Uh, and I think it looks, I think it's got a really clean look. It's a very subtle look, but you know it's a Mesh of IC when you see it. Uh, that or a Define C. So it depends on how much you want to spend. If you're more worried about value, the P350X is it. Also, if you're more worried about RGB illumination, the P350X is it. Uh, but if you're more worried about just being cool, you know, just being chill, I think the Mesh of IC is the better bet. H500 only if you want a bigger case for water cooling or the sort. Scrolling down, uh, let's see. Ba -ba. I see good questions here. Uh, okay, I have Science Studio. Would you say the four cores, four threads is holding me back on my i5 7600K paired with a GTX 1060 3 gig? Nope. Uh, I would actually say that what's holding you back with that is your 3 gig frame buffer on your 1060. I don't think that was a. Um, I think that was a kind of a. a sh uh, it was just. Wasn't a good move on Intel's part, or not Intel, Nvidia's part. Uh, with a three gig frame buffer on a 1060, kind of cuts it at its knees because it's very easy to max out three gigs uh, of RAM, especially in some modded games. Um, but you could max out GTA 5 settings and get pretty close to that sometimes. So, and, and a 1060 can handle all those things that you add onto it for the most part in 1080p, but the frame buffer sometimes is the limiting factor. And to me, that should never be the case in the graphics card. Excuse me, so I think your, your, you know, your quad core chip there is certainly going to be a bottleneck under certain situations, but I think that your 1063 gig is probably the thing that I would upgrade first, believe it or not, just because if you upgrade the CPU, you're either going to have to upgrade the entire platform, which will require a motherboard and CPU change, uh, versus just jumping from a 1060 to a 1070, in my opinion, would be a, basically a night and day difference, especially in 1440p. Okay, let's see here. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, Java, okay, I see one from Java, what's his name? Uh, Java Budget Gaming. I see you have an E3 Xeon Gaming PC build video. I'd love for you to make a uh, an X34XX hyper-threaded variance PC build. They're good second-gen i7 equivalent CPUs when overclocked to 3.8 plus gigahertz with a 1060. Uh, yeah, and this is something that I would say is probably more in Brian's realm from Techie City. Uh, and Brian and I work, work together a lot, but I would say um, that that's certainly something we could do on the channel. I would just need Brian's help. So maybe we can have him as a guest in that video and uh, we can put something like that together. The problem is though, all that stuff's out of pocket. So whenever I buy used components, right, I don't get used components for, for free from anybody. Um, and it's difficult for me to source all these parts from multiple videos. So when I do something like this, I'm kind of going all in. Maybe I'll resell it. Like that could be how I recoup my investment. I could do a second video on trying to sell the thing. Um, so that's a, that's a possibility. But in general, I try to have all the components in hand up front if I can from a company. If I don't, like with my used graphics cards, I bought all those out of pocket. Um, but it just helps when I don't have to dip into my own uh, business account to pay for all this stuff because it can get very expensive, especially when we build at least one PC a week. Uh, so that's the only thing I'm afraid of. But again, if I if I sell these sell these builds, uh, that'd be a cool way to try to flip them. You know, we can do something like that. Try to experiment. Who's the best flipper? Maybe that would be pretty cool. Uh, just a way to spice things up on the channel a bit. 8-Bit Explorer. Thank you for that $5 super chat, my dude. I appreciate it. Just built an i5-650. Whoa, 650. Wow. <laughs> i5-650, 1060, 6 gig, super, super clocked, 8 gig. Would a better upgrade i3 be 8100 or an i5-8400? I mean, obviously the i5-8400 is the better upgrade. I think we can all agree on that. Um, for the price, I still think the i5-8400 is a better bet. If you want to stick with Intel, which I assume you do because you didn't recommend an R5 processor, then I would say the R5 
excuse me, the i5-8400 is the best bet. I think it's the best i5 CPU around for around 180 bucks. Sometimes you can get it for. I think that's a really good value. Um, still not as good as Ryzen 5, just throwing that out there. But if you want to stick with Intel, I totally get it. The i5-8400 will game very well in uh, 1080p, 1440p, and in 4K, just because it does have six cores at its disposal, and the clocks are decent, considering the SKU is, is not an unlock SKU. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think the i5-8400 is a better bet. I wouldn't buy an i3 at this point. I, I think that the Ryzen 5s have definitely wiped wipe the floor with the with the i3 unless you're doing just gaming which is something i don't recommend anybody commit to because you find you'll use that system for more than just gaming down the line i bet um, and then the r5 versus i5 debacle i think that i mean because you can buy ryzen 7 1700s for like 180 bucks sometimes that to me kills the r5 or the i5 excuse me um, but if you again are just gaming and that's all you're ever worried about then i that's the one place where the i5 is recommended in my book I, I, it's just it's very difficult for me to, to say hey just buy a system or build a system just for gaming because I don't think that's something you're ever gonna only do you'll either get into streaming or you'll get into content creation or you want to do something above gaming because gaming is just gaming right that that's all it is it's just for you but if you want to do it for other people and do it to grow your business or whatever then you're gonna want to do more than just game and I think you're limiting yourself when you just buy uh, you know uh, an i5 when you could have so much more at your disposal with multi-threading support and more cores again at your disposal for the same price. Okay, let's do one more question here. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for something, something juicy. Give me some. Give me a good question. Somebody who I haven't answered a question from yet. Let's see here. Java says, no problem, man. Just saying, as a future video idea. Totally cool, man. Yeah, and that's actually a really good idea. I think. Uh, I think it's a good idea because we haven't done a Xeon build in a long time. Like like you said, you, we've only done one on the channel, and that was a while back. That was actually a new Xeon that I bought because it was a it was an alternative to the i7 uh, SKU that was a little more expensive. The Xeon just didn't have a dedicated GPU. Let's see, something good, folks. Give me something good. Uh, how long do you warm up that oatmeal? <laughs> oh gosh, I can't even. I can't remember the last time I had oatmeal. Is that weird? I don't think that's weird. Okay. Uh, hmm. Let's see. I'm looking at all the questions. I'm looking at them. I'm looking for something juicy. Yeah, it better be juicy, folks. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. I see them rolling in. Oh, yeah. Here they come. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Mm-hmm, okay, okay. These are, all right, these are looking good. All right, let's see here. Uh, Canon Shane, have you built in a Corsair Air 240? No, I haven't. Uh, maybe at some point I will. Uh, I know they wanted me to build in it, or they wanted me to review it. I, I just, I didn't have the time because I was in, about to get ready to move. That was right after Computex, I think, when they were sending those out, and I had a lot of things on my plate, a lot of case reviews, actually, that I'd already planned. Um, but I think I will build in it at some point. I just need a, I need more MATX motherboards. I don't have many <laughs> here. Actually, I don't have any here right now. Uh, so I got to get a couple MATX boards in here. We'll do a couple cool videos uh, with cases like that for sure. Uh, Jonathan asks, looking for any good Black Friday deals? Not really. You know, I noticed last year's Black Friday was basically TVs. Like, that was all they were really pitching to people was like, hey, check out this 4K 55-inch TV for $300. Like, that, I saw a ton of that. And then maybe some console deals. Nothing really on graphics cards and CPUs. It was just a really bad time. Um, and, and I was kind of disappointed by that. I think the year before that was much better. So we'll see. Of course, I'll keep my, I'll keep my eye open. And uh, if we do see anything really good, we will have those videos on the channel for you guys to check out, hopefully in advance, so you can plan for them uh, in the future. Um, that's, that's just my take on it. Uh, Z77 Job Jaw says, my question is juicy. Yeah, you didn't ask the question in the comments, so rip that, right? You were supposed to ask it so I could read the whole thing, not just part of it. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, X Boogie says, keep up the good videos. I appreciate that, my dude. Look, it is 10.05 here, folks. It's been a long day. I've been helping my parents clean up, and uh, we're going to be doing more of that tomorrow, I imagine. So I'm going to get on out of here. I appreciate you stopping by on the Sunday night slash Monday morning or afternoon, depending on where you live on the planet. This is After Hours number 27. Before we end this one, I'm going to ask you guys to please spam the chat box with your favorite emojis. And that's how we end every After Hours live stream. Uh, we've been doing that for the past, what, 10 or so episodes, and I love that. It gives me a chance to shout out at you guys for watching and for being 
uh, very vocal in the chat box. So please spam with your favorite emoji. You're not gonna be blocked or anything like that. No one's gonna, no mod's gonna mess with you. I am telling you right now to please spam the chat. Give me your favorite emojis and I will do my best to shout out to as many of them as I see before we call this one quits. I see Cody Salox already jumping on board. We have Video Games Planet. What's going on? Uh, pretty much where it is, Video Games Planet, the house is where it is. It's the same as it was in the video. There's, it's actually getting worse because the roof is like now caving in. Uh, so we'll be cleaning more of it out tomorrow. Uh, Jocko, I see you. I see Doc Dizzle. I see uh, Ka Kostub Patuk. Gosh, I'm butchering these names. Let's see. I see Derek. I see Ethan. I see Raptor. I see Seth. I see Adrian. What's going on, folks? I see Joel. I see... What's up, Chris? Chris Stoles. Corsair Chris. What's going on, my dude? I see Johnny C. Uh, I see Tech Crimson. Thanks for modding Tech Crimson. DC, Jeff Phillips. What's going on, Jeff? Toaster. I got Toaster in here. Uh, I see Steve. I see, uh, let's see, DP. I see Mick Ice. What's going on, Mick Ice? I see KWE Dog 2373. Steve W. Louis Caprio. I see Bernard Joseph. Brian L. I see Benjamin C. I see Mahir. I see, oh my gosh, Steven. I see Bernard, Brian L again, Joran, oh my gosh, Bro, Joran, there, there's so many emojis because I told people to spam the chat with emojis, that's how we end the live streams, just, boop, boop. I said that like 10 seconds ago, anyway, uh, what do we have here, more Louis, I see the one Reaper, I see King Carl, I see Carolina Customs, and uh, alright, looking pretty good. I like to see the chat saturated at the end of the day with your favorite emojis because it gives me a chance again to thank you personally or as personally as we can possibly get this to be for tuning in uh, to the 27th After Hours here on Science Studio. Again, thanks for watching, folks. I'm going to swing on over here so I can actually end the live stream appropriately. I appreciate you guys uh, taking time out of your day to watch the live stream. And stay tuned for more videos on the channel. There will be more coming up very soon, including a 2080 review. We're going to go pretty in-depth with this one because I think you guys deserve the due diligence. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. I'm swinging over here. It's getting awkward. I'll catch you in the next video. Here we go. And...